welcome to a new episode of Cultural Magazine. Today's episode is special as it comes during the holy months of Ramadan. So stay with us. Once of Ramadan is known for its folkloric, religious, and cultural events and shows. So following Iftar, which is breaking the fast, Egyptians go out to enjoy the Ramadan nights. The Ramadan lantern or Fanus Ramadan is one of the most characteristic features of the holy months. You'd find it hanged in front of every door, in front of the various shops, even in the balconies of the various homes. So now let's look into the history of Fanus Ramadan. Ramadan is a magical month known for its unique traditions. One of these magical traditions are the Ramadan lanterns, the fawanis, which are now frequently made from recycled tin cans or plastic lanterns that play the latest popular music. Lanterns and lamps of various kinds whose antique rays of brightness have always been special to the Egyptians. Many stories of their origins have been told. It is believed that it started during the rule of the Fatimid Caliph Al Hakim Ba'amrillah. One story said that Al Hakim wanted to decorate and light the streets at night. Another story said that he did not allow women out, and when women went out, a boy went in front of them and he held a lantern. When that tradition stopped, the Egyptians were fond of lanterns, so they kept the tradition of lighting the lanterns. This tradition continued that little children carry them in the streets every day to play. The fanus remained a very unique symbol of Ramadan to Muslims and Christians alike. It has passed from generation to generation and is today associated with children and with Ramadan. During the holy months of Ramadan, we see children happily swinging their fawanis and singing Wahawiya Wahawi. Egypt is known for its unique handicrafts, so now let's look at some of the handicrafts popular in Egypt. If you want to know the secrets of such a craft which attracts everybody's attention worldwide, then you have to visit Khen Al Khalili district. Engraving copper is one of the most important crafts that still preserves the secrets and techniques of the old crafts. Egyptian craftsmen mastered this craft which made tourists rush to acquire some of such copper engravings and take them back to their countries as a souvenir from Cairo.
Copper objects are developed and other metals are used like silver and gold in addition to wood. These copper objects are found in each and every Egyptian house, as well as musk. Decorated with copper pendant lamps and copper pictures which charm whoever sees them. Each object made by a skillful craftsman represents a marvelous masterpiece. Aiming at preserving the handicrafts in Egypt, Prince Charles Traditional Handicraft School, in cooperation with Egypt's Cultural Fund Box, signed a mutual protocol in which it offered courses for artists who are interested in learning how to design and execute their own artifacts themselves. <laughs> I'm the manager of the project Art is Beautiful for Folk and Traditional Arts. This project was inaugurated in 2009. The project targets developing the skills of artists and teaching them how to design and execute their own artistic works. A talent which is uncommon now in Egypt and the world. Traditionally, the artist used to produce his own works. He was respected throughout the ages. Now we're suffering from the lack of respect for handicrafts as well as for the craftsmen. People are turning to academic learning. Now the designers are graduates of the Faculty of Engineering, Fine Arts or Applied Arts. Then these graduates search for craftsmen to make their designs for them. Also there are craftsmen who lack the knowledge of designing. Our program aims at enhancing the skills of the artists to combine both designing and execution skills. We started by surveying the situation in Egypt and how could Prince Charles Traditional Handicraft School in England help in reviving the Egyptian handicrafts. Of course, we had to decide upon the most important styles and techniques used.
Rafina Bottezini, um, project manager and outreach manager at the Princess School of Traditional Arts. And um, I've been uh, coming to Cairo, working on this project since 2006, uh, when we started working with craftsmen here at the um, centre, uh, run by the Ministry of Culture. And um, we were invited to work with the craftsmen at first for two years, and I personally came and te uh, taught here, together with local teachers as well. And after two years, some of the craftsmen, they were our students, uh, became the teachers of this program uh, that exists now. The program uh, here is a diploma course, and uh, people apply. Uh, we have a lot of young people, but also the ages are very different. Uh, we also have um, people who are training again, or maybe you know they were teachers and they would like to do something else differently in their lives, later on in their lives. So there is no age restriction, um, but uh, it's a, it's a um, it's a three um, three days a week course, and you teach. Uh, we teach geometry, nabati, and then the crafts. So we also teach design. And here, uh, we really want our students to be as creative as possible with traditional uh, understanding and traditional knowledge. So they learn. Uh, about how to create geometric patterns, how to, uh, to draw them from scratch, and how to make composition. And then uh, they also learn the crafts, and they apply the designs onto the objects that they produce. So it's a two-year course, and um, uh, so far I find that our students are growing very much the quality is getting higher, and uh, we have many applicants every year. We have uh, almost 80 applicants every year. We take only about 20. And, um, and I, as you'll be able to see, um, what they produce is really very original, but also very rooted within uh, the Egyptian and the Islamic uh, culture, and sometimes beyond the Islamic culture as well. Um, so I also uh, teach in London, I work in London, and I always find that the work of the students here is very, very special, and that there's a lot of talent and a lot of creativity. And um, I find um, here the students are a lot more uh, dynamic than the students in London. So uh, I hope that um, you'll have a chance here of seeing some of the work. lucky that the Minister of Culture invited uh, the school to work in the centre here in 2006 and, um, and we were very happy to take on this challenge and to be here um, and um, it was one of our first um, international projects and our first project here in Cairo. So they are the main partners uh, here with us and um, also our Jamil has been supporting the project since right at the beginning. So there's Art Jamil, the Ministry of Culture, and the Princess School of Traditional Arts together. We have, over the years, created this program, and it's changed slightly uh, and improving all the time. 
Of course, the Islamic tradition uh, for us is important that um, there is a deeper understanding on, on how Islamic design, traditional design is created because these are things which are being lost. Uh, and also we teach our, our students how to uh, draw the patterns the, in the right way, in the correct way with the right tools. And we have found that sometimes uh, craftsmen who've been working all their lives, they have found these classes beneficial and they very much enjoyed uh, this. So this is a focus because we feel that we can give a lot in this area. However, we have students uh, from a Coptic background and we welcome that very much. And they still learn about geometry and patterns, but they also bring some of their cultures. We have students who are very interested in the pre-Islamic traditions of Egypt, in some of the pharaonic traditions, and also some of the um, sort of more maybe what you might call uh, folkloristic sort of designs. So we are happy to absorb all of that. And uh, that those are areas that we would learn from the students that come to us. But the area of expertise that we can certainly give is very much in the Islamic designs and the Islamic patterns. Now the school in London teaches all of the traditional arts. Uh, we've worked in China, we work in Malaysia, we work in uh, Canada, in the US, we work all over the Middle East, um, we're working in Azerbaijan, and um, so we, we are flexible and we can bring in the knowledge of uh, different cultures, but we also learn very much from every place that we go to, and this is, this is probably the most important thing for us, this is how we grow and how we learn more. During the holy months of Ramadan, the Egyptian handicrafts come to life. Among these traditional handicrafts is pottery. So now let's look at that traditional craft.
محمد رشد جابر من اسيوط كلية بحضر ماجستير في الخزف في كلية تربية نوعية خاصة تربية فنية خاصة خزف. I'm from Asyut. I'm working on my master's degree in pottery. I joined this symposium because I'm interested in pottery. My work is derived from nature with earth's textures. I love the way plants emerge from the earth. This design represents the earth with its cracks. I like to work with natural motifs. Nature is beautiful, so I dislike using artificial designs. اسمي محمد عبد المنعم بحضر دكتوراه في التربيه الفنيه واحنا النهارده مشتركين في سمبوزيوم الخزف نحت ميادين خزف ميادين I'm preparing my PhD in art I'm taking part in this symposium The piece in front of me belongs to the abstract school it is an abstract form of human being in motion I'm making it out of mud so that once it dries it turns into pottery Pottery requires abstract form with few details. أنا أستاذ الخزف كلية تربية فنية واسمي أستاذ فتحية إبراهيم فريد أستاذ دكتور فتحية إبراهيم فريد I'm a professor of pottery. I have held many pottery exhibitions for my works. I took part in many symposiums including the Qina Pottery Symposium. My work is characterized by its colors and the use of colored mud. I like the effect it produces. This group of bowls are not finished, yet I'm going to design them. This piece was designed on the pottery wheel. Then I evened its surface and smoothed it. We can combine a variety of designs together to create a unique one. After you surface the polished piece, you leave it to dry. Then you design it. This piece can't stand on its own, so I have to add a base to it and could add another design on top. By that, I have combined the pottery wheel design with the manual one.
by this we come to an end of this episode of Cultural Magazine. Until we meet again, happy Ramadan to everyone.